33-year-old Ko Juan Chen started her working life as a marketing executive. But five years ago, she decided to make a career switch. I was always having this nagging feeling that, you know, I do want to enter healthcare. And I decided that maybe there was a point of time where I do want to merge data with healthcare. She went back to school pursuing a master's in business analytics. She now works as an artificial intelligence data scientist. My interest in data science um, do translate to a higher paycheck because the average salary of the um, graduates from computer science do uh, garner a competitive salary. She now makes about 15% more in her new job and upskilling didn't end after she graduated. In her role as an AI data scientist, she has to keep track of developments in the health and technology fields. Much of my time is spent on research as well as uh, testing new codes and building predictive models. So um, actually, this form of continuous learning is embedded into my work. So usually every morning I will spend around 30 minutes to you know, keep updated of the latest um, AI uh, news through the Substack app that I subscribe to. It's estimated that skill set for jobs have changed by around 25% since 2015 and health tech is one sector where industry transformation is a daily challenge. To think of ourselves as uh, having a vision of inspiring tomorrow's health. And we see technology really as an enabler that will help get us there. And therefore, upskilling and training and getting people ready for the future of health is really key to the success of our organisation. Creating a sustainable learning culture means taking into account business and personal goals. I think having uh, no time and family obligations, I think those are uh, uh, sort of real uh, challenges that people face on the ground. What we have is also opportunities to have really bite-sized learning opportunities. We have stackable micro-certification courses. That means people can you know, really spend 20 minutes each session uh, just learn and then uh, move on and then come back to it later on when they have a little bit more time. There are e-learning opportunities uh, all made available to our staff uh, to be able to sort of manage between the, the, the requirements of their projects and also family obligations. In Singapore, Skills Future is the national organisation that oversees skills training for Singaporeans. Last year, over half a million people took part in initiatives supported by the agency. And studies have shown wage premiums of up to 10% among those who went through its programs. There are other long-term payoffs as well. We are quite conscious of uh, how much money you earn, how much you want to save, how much, how much money you want to invest. So for our skills, it is our productive assets. If you look at the productive assets, we need to ask ourselves is, do we have the skills needed to be continue to be successful tomorrow? I would say a lot of people, majority of people, will tend to put this as maybe on the back burner, last resort, only when bad things happen, involuntary, out of job, then you start to worry about what am I going to do next. But if we would all constantly keep ourselves updated about what's the latest skills in demand, what are the opportunity for me to move into other job roles, I think then the kind of fear and anxiety can be better managed. We all can see the many disruptions that are taking place in the global workforce um, because of technology, because of the green transition, because of geopolitical shifts. And the main currency that workers have to be able to move from one role to the other or to be able to continue to grow within existing roles, the main currency for workers are skills. Worldwide, only 0.5% of GDP is invested in adult lifelong learning. With over a billion jobs expected to be affected by technology, the World Economic Forum is calling for a reskilling revolution to help millions of people reach their potential. We cannot really conduct a, uh, a, the digital transformation that most companies and countries are going through 
or the green transition that most countries are aspiring to. Neither of these two things is possible without a, a commensurate investment in human capital. And certainly that starts with um, education for the future workforce, but it also means reskilling and upskilling for the current workforce. So this is one of the fundamental threads that all economies around the world should be thinking about, especially as a boost to their economies in this post-pandemic era.